Hi everyone, welcome to our channel. We're the Tiny Camper Gang. My name's Mike. I'm Nat. This is Max. And this is Catalina. And we will be going around the U.S. every weekend that we can to get new footage of all great places. There's more to come, so stay tuned. So today we're going to be going over the Mossy Oak 18 BHS. This is our first camper into the camping game, as per se. So, it is about 22 feet long. If you were to add on the, uh, the actual hitch, you can walk over here. It is equipped with one propane tank and a 12 volt battery right here. We were lucky enough to get the option for the actual power hitch. Um, as you can see, I already started to do some things just to uh, make it a little better and safer for travel. This had a lot of play in it, so I decided to just add uh, a couple straps down there just so it doesn't fly off. So just move it around, the next part. It does come with the solar ready, and a lot of people uh, think that that means that you can plug in and have solar power, like if you were to run solar panels on there, but that's actually false. The solar ready connection is just a wire that runs to the battery so that you'll be able to trickle charge it uh, if you were storing it somewhere where you couldn't plug it in so the battery wouldn't die. Over here we have our storage compartment which runs all the way through. As you can see, we are getting ready for our next trip. Uh, there is a light down there as well, but we use it for necessity items, chairs. Uh, we sometimes we put firewood down there just for the trip. Over here we have our power awning with the LED light. There'll be more footage of that at nighttime with it all lit up, but there is a light that runs across there. It's like a bluish purplish type light, and it's really nice. This one is a actual power awning where you click the button and it comes out pretty standard on most RVs nowadays. It is also equipped with two outside speakers, which aren't the best quality. However, uh, I feel like you don't want really loud speakers when you're out in a campground anyways. So we have the base set all the way down just so that we're not bothering other people. We sit right here by this tire when we camp. So it works perfect for us. Over here you'll see the cooking vent where we have the hood inside and you'll turn it on and uh, that is where your, your food will vent out from that you're cooking. Over here we have the microwave vents and over here we have the furnace vent. Alright, moving around. We do not have power jack stabilizing system. We have the regular old stuff that comes in your spare car. Come closer. Don't then moving up to our lights, we have the three lights on top, which I've already double sealed with RV sealant just because they weren't confident inspiring. They looked like they were cracking up, so I already went up there and sealed them up even more. I probably should do the same to these eventually, but they didn't look too bad, so I didn't bother with that. Over here, we have our bumper which has the slot where our, uh, our sewer hose actually is stored. Moving on to our tires. We were equipped with the Radio SD tires, which I feel are better than just the run of the mill tires. Uh, we do have to get a cover for this to make sure that it doesn't dry rot and whatnot. And then it also is filled with nitrous uh, which prevents it from heating up as fast as just regular air. Moving on over here, we have the hot water area, which is propane. It's a six gallon capacity, which is more than enough for us. I think our gray water tanks would fill before we could actually take a long shower anyways. Pretty standard stuff. That needs some WD-40. Over here we have our cable TV and satellite input. We haven't used it yet because um, we have streaming services in there and we are eventually going to want to get a Wi-Fi or signal booster that we'll install somewhere on the roof anyways for streaming. Uh, we do have our city water connection which is located over here. 
pretty standard stuff. We do have also the outside shower, which I was discussing with Nat not too long ago that it's actually going to be really convenient to have. Simply because when we're washing the dishes, we could wash them out here. Or if we need to rinse off our feet or something before we go inside, we could do that. And that'll prevent us from getting our gray water tanks filled up too fast. So down here, this is where the uh, magic happens for the RV. You take a look. So this is our uh, gray water and our black water holding tank levers. Uh, this being the black one, which it is pushed all the way in, even though it doesn't look like it in the video. And then we have our gray water pull valve right there. This is our little cap, which we twist that, and then we'll release gray first, and then black at the end. Oh, actually, I mixed that up. It's black first, then gray. Over here we have our electric connection. It is a 30 amp connection. And we have an adapter fitted just for the house while we're here parked, getting ready for our next trip. Um, so that we could run a regular house outlet to the RV to power things like the air conditioning or the TV to make sure that's all working good before we head out on our trip. This trailer is equipped with a slide, essentially. It's not a very big slide, but it is for our dining area and whatnot, where we'll sit down and eat, give us a little bit more space so that we're not completely on top of each other and let her crawl around more places, so good stuff there. Moving around, you'll see this is the other side of our storage area. This door is actually a little bit bigger, so if you wanted to store bigger items, I guess they expect you to come over to this side. And that is pretty much the walk around of the outside of the RV. Eventually what I'd like to do to this is I'd like to add another propane tank somewhere around there. I know it's pretty hard to think where I would put that, but if you have any ideas, please feel free to comment and let us know. Otherwise, we're going to be stuck with that one tank. And I don't want to be, in the winter, stuck with that one tank. Alright. Specs on this trailer is... Right. Go ahead and get a close-up on this sticker. Alright. So, it says over here that our car cargo capacity should never go past 520 pounds, which we don't have a single issue with that. A full load of water for us is about 216 pounds, about 8 pounds per gallon by the way. And the weight of the trailer is roughly 3,430 pounds when it is dry. That means no water inside of the tanks. Um, yeah, I'm actually looking for the sticker that tells me what PSI these tires are supposed to be at. I haven't found it yet, so if you also know that, feel free to let us know. Cut there. Okay, so I'm going to be doing the walkthrough of the inside of our trailer. Her name is Maple after the tree, the maple tree. And she is a mossy oak edition. We decided to go with mossy oak because they like to partner with many different nature and different charities and they do a lot of work that has to do with the environment. They also do have hunting gear, which can be nice. <laughs> So, anyways, this would be storage over our bed, and that's usually where we keep all of our clothes, her diapers, and we have another compartment right here. It's good enough for us. We don't really bring too much clothes when we go on our camping trips, and we've got our queen-size bed. We ended up putting a memory foam mattress because the mattress it came with was very terrible. Um, we have a security or a privacy privacy curtain right here that extends all the way in case anyone wants privacy which would be very nice it's also the mossy oak edition then this is our pop-out dining room or dining area with the standard table it comes with, we put this cover on it to try to keep it as clean as possible. Yeah, the whole trim of this trailer is mossy oak, as you could see over there. We have our nice little decorations. This actually has a lot of storage in it. If you were to go into under the bed compartment, 
it leads to the outdoor storage. So you could easily reach in and grab anything you need from the outdoor storage if you need. We also have a couple of things stored under there. And here we have our kitchen. Michael actually attached this TV a couple of days ago. He had to drill a hole. We have the i iTV, iTunes TV back there, whatever it's called. Yeah, so he had to drill a hole through it in there. I'm not sure if you could see, but he brought the cables through and they're plugged in with an extension cord in there. This is our little toaster oven with our coffee maker and griddle. We have yet to use it. We just got that. We have our sound system right here, which plays inside and outside. Yep. And then here we've got some more storage for different canned foods or pasta. Here we have our sink and a little candle. Then we've got our two stove burners, which are propane powered. Got more storage up here next to the microwave, right there. It's usually where we keep all the baby's food and formula and all that. And then we have our microwave, which came with the RV. It's not too big, but it works for what we would use it. And then we have a little refrigerator, which is hard to open. But it works yeah it's not huge but like I said for what we would use it it's perfect and under here we have more storage this is where we keep all of our let me see if I can turn on this light well that didn't help much but this is where we keep all of our utensils our pans our mixing bowls are down there and then look at these silverware set that I got on Amazon. I think they're adorable. We've got that. Come here, you. You can't go in there. And then there's also this one for more storage. And then these are the bunks. We have the top bunk and the bottom bunk. The bottom bunk, we had to um, modify it because this is where the baby sleeps. So... So she won't roll off. It has a nice little window. Those are her blankets. We added a mirror right here. <laughs> hi! Can you say hi? <laughs> and in here is our bathroom. Which we also customized a little bit. This is where we hang all of our shampoos, conditioners, brushes. Can go down? Shampoos, conditioners, brushes, all of our bath, and all the stuff we use, pretty much. And then, we even have for Max, we have his shampoo. We have a yellow rug, the sunflower theme, that sign right there. because yeah, you never know who's going to need to see that. And then, all of our towels, we put that nifty little towel rack there. This is our tub. Uh, it's pretty small, but it works for what we're using it, which is for the baby. Because she needs a tub to shower in. An adult wouldn't really fit in that tub. Well, they would, but it wouldn't be too comfortable. It has a nice little sunroof up there, so you could get some light. And of course, right here we have our vent, which is to air out whenever we need some air in here. Yep. Let's hang this up right here. What are you doing? Careful. Come here. Come here. And then there's our toilet, which it's one of those foot pushy ones. But yeah, that's our air conditioning. It's the same one they use in the bigger RVs, in the large RVs. So we've realized that when we turn this air conditioning on, it makes the entire camper super, super cold. 
so we can't really have it running for too long and if we do we do put it on the lowest setting so this also gives off heat so for whenever we go out camping and it's chilly or cold we would use it for the heat as well and it's not the best when it comes for heat but if we ever need to boost our heat we also have a furnace i believe it's down there yeah our furnace and then if we turn that on then the whole camper gets super hot and that is what works for us and yeah well, that's the basic walkthrough of our camper it's not the biggest camper but it is perfect for us we are not very big people and we're a small family and there's just enough space for everyone to be comfortable so this is our tow vehicle and i'll tell you why having a, a really good tow vehicle is important when you're towing an rv so this is what's going to get you from point a to point b you need to make sure you're checking all of your capacities so this is a jeep grand cherokee eco diesel 2018. so if you come on over you'll see that i've done a couple things to it so right there i've upgraded to a more uh heavy duty tire uh, a truck tire actually these truck tires uh, have a heavier load, they're more capable in any terrain, and they're just overall more effective. They do affect the gas mileage maybe by like half a mile per gallon for us, but overall it's not that bad. All right, so let me tell you a little bit about this sticker over here, because I know you're all looking at it. So this is from the Seven Deadly Sins anime. So I thought it'd be a cool idea for every truck in my family, since we all do RVs, to have a different crest on there from the anime so I have this one which is Wrath and that is the name of the Jeep and when we show everybody else's vehicles their tow vehicles you'll I'll make sure that I point out their stickers and where they decide to put their stickers alright so as you can see this is a 2018 Jeep Grand Cherokee Trailhawk with the eco diesel engine coming on in I'm gonna actually go to the hood so We did decide to add the uh, worn winch. It's a 15,000 pound winch. And that's just in case either us or anybody on the road or if anybody needs help, we're always able to tow or pull anybody out of a sticky situation. It's tucked up in there. I don't know, I could do a little bit better on the, uh, on the actual um, detailing, but it is what it is for now. It works. All right, now we take a look at the Jeep Eco Diesel. 3.0 and it does have a turbocharger on there we're pushing at about 260 horsepower and about 420 pound feet of torque now the reason why i decided to go with an eco diesel instead of a hemi or instead of a uh, v6 pentastar engine was because of the torque i'm getting right now uh towing our little maple we're getting about 15 and a half to 16 miles per gallon on the highway doing about 55 to 60 I have not done 65 yet with the trailer I'll probably keep it around 60 to be honest just to be safe and we'll see how it goes from there because we're taking a longer trip um, down south uh, in a couple weeks so more to come on the miles per gallon that we're getting without maple attached uh, we did a nine hour trip down to South Carolina from Kentucky and we got about 26 and a half miles per gallon and it was about a 10 hour drive so we made it there on one tank of gas which is outrageous for a vehicle of this size and this weight it's actually really heavy it's a really heavy engine yeah. all right so this is the actual tow hitch that i keep on there at all times and i'll tell you the reason why i do that is because if i'm at work or if i'm parking somewhere in a grocery store and somebody decides to bump into my bumper they'll actually be hitting which will do more damage to them and let them know to stop. Now this is all plastic and there's sensors over here. So if somebody were to bump into that and they had a steel bumper, they would leave a lot of scratches, dings and stuff that would be a pain in the butt overall just to get off. So I leave this on there at all times. Um, and it also has a hook right here. So if I ever need to help somebody out or if I need help, they can always attach the toe strap there and they'll pull us out. So over here, this Jeep comes equipped with the uh, maximum towing capacity that they offered. That was one of the things that I told them, just in case I got the boat or the RV or, or whatever I did. I ended up getting an RV, but 
It does have the um, actual uh, connection, which has the brake controllers, as well as, so it also has the actual brake controller connection, and then it has your standard, uh, just trailer light connection over here. This is the interior of Wrath. She's uh, full leather seats, as you can see. Um, we did get the uh, optional leather seats. They have air conditioning, heating, you, you can see it's a Trailhawk. Um, and it did come with the trailer brake controller uh, connections. However, it didn't come with an option or a slot to put the trailer brakes on. So what I ended up doing was I mounted it right here by my right knee. And it doesn't get in the way at all. Like I haven't had any issues with it being there yet. Um, I think I bumped my knee into it twice and that was just on my brake when I was trying to lay back in the actual Jeep. But other than that, perfect for our family of three plus max. As you can see, my wife does have a lot of space back here, and so does Catalina. She has a little toy hanging up there. She has a um, outlet down there to charge the laptop. She has heated seats in the back, very comfortable leather seats, and they do actually recline. So if she wanted to take a break, she could, you know, lay back or whatever. And then there's also USB chargers down there when she needs to charge her phone. One thing I want to do in the future to this Jeep specifically, just for the long trips that we're planning on taking, is add an iPad when Catalina gets a little bit older so that she'll have entertainment with headphones and she'll be relaxed back there. Going over to the back, let's talk more about towing capacities with this Jeep, right? So this Jeep is rated with the 4x4 to tow 7,200 pounds. Now, our trailer only weighs about 4,000 pounds with tanks filled with water. That's the freshwater tank. However, that's not necessarily a cookie cutter number. Everybody should definitely check their payload capacity because it's different from your towing capacity. So if you were to look up this Jeep online, you'd see that it, it'll say like 7,400 for the two wheel drive and 7,200 for the four wheel drive, which is what we have. But payload capacity is custom to every single Jeep or vehicle that you buy based off of the VIN number. So if you come over here, I'll show you a little trick so you'll always know what your payload capacity will be no matter what vehicle you're in. So right here, this little sticker, as you can see over here, it says the combined weight of occupants and cargo should never exceed 1,050 pounds. That is our payload capacity. So when you guys are looking at rigs, RVs, trailers, you need to account for that. The reason why I say that is because uh, a lot of times you'll see people, especially in half ton trucks, that'll say, I could tow, you know, 11,000 pounds, your trailer means nothing, or whatever, or this trailer's good, or the salesman will say, you got 11,000 pound towing capacity, the trailer's only 7,000 pounds, you're good. However, what they're not factoring in is the VIN number and the payload capacity that comes with your vehicle specifically. And that's all based off of your vehicle. So I'll give you an example. So my brother actually bought a trailer recently, about 7,200 pounds. His payload capacity in his 1,500 Ram with the Hemi and the full tow capacity package was roughly 1,200 and some change for his payload. Well, once you factor in the tongue weight of the actual RV, and the personnel and the cargo into this vehicle he was like right below his limit so he was safe essentially just like we are so with our rig our setup we're looking at about 960 pounds and our max is 1050 so we're 100 pounds below our maximum payload capacity for the jeep now i'm sure there's things you could do to upgrade that as in like a suspension or you could get better tires and that may improve your overall uh you know payload capacity but just to be safe just follow the stickers that are on the side of the door so yeah that's pretty much all i have for for good old rash she's been good we've had her for eleven thousand miles now we plan on putting many more on her um she is a bit needy sometimes in the sense of her oil changes or whatnot we do have the oil there we're going to change it before we go on the big trip and then we are also going to make sure that we change our differential fluid in the rear 
and maybe the front system, it's technically an all-wheel drive with a transfer case that is detachable. So we'll probably end up doing our, um, our differential fluid changes around 30 to 45,000 miles. So we'll see how she goes. She's <laughs> Hi everyone, welcome to our channel. We're the Tiny Camping Gang. Camper Gang or Camping Gang? Camper. Oh, okay. <laughs> Cut. I don't know how One. much. One. Hi everyone, welcome to our channel. We're the Tiny Camping Gang. Camper? Camper Gang! <laughs> Uh, Bang! We'll have bloopers. Okay. Oh. Okay, one, two, three. Hi, everyone. <laughs> I'm too camera shy. I'm not going to be able to do this. And I hyped everyone up for it. <laughs> two, one. Hi, everyone. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> We're the tiny camper gang. All right, you do the intro. I can't do it. All right. It's too much three, pressure. Three, two, one. Hi everyone, we're the Tiny Camper Gang, and welcome to our channel. I'm Mike. I'm Nat. And this is Max. And this is Kat. Stay tuned for more adventures. Perfect. Cat. Poor cat. So cute. So I'll show you uh, what we're actually using to tow. Let me just take a second here. Admire. Brad. Yeah, it's not gonna happen. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, we'll do a little thing when we're connected, but. 